Today, I want to talk to you a few minutes about something the Lord laid on my heart actually about two weeks ago and has continued to deal with me on it. And uh, to say that I've been fought <coughs> from the enemy concerning it would be an understatement. But that's all right. We're going to go ahead and preach it anyway. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't expect it to be agreed upon by everyone out there under the sound of my voice that's watching my video. So to appease you and to save you the time, I'm going to use the Scriptures this morning that you use against me. I'm going to start off with those. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about where we're at this morning. This place. This building. The place we have set aside to worship the Lord. The place that we have set aside for prayer, that we have set aside for worship, that we have set aside to be the place where we not complete, not not just learn about the Word of God, because we learn about the Word of God at home. We pray at home. We worship at home. Right. But we come together, as the Bible says, to assemble yourselves together. Amen. It says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, Brother Dave. Amen. Yes. Even as you see that day So some people say, well, I don't have to go to church. Well, the Bible tells you to. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Mm -hmm. And you know as well as I do that most of you out there, unless you go and you go to church where they're at, they're not going to come to your house, amen, and y'all going to assemble there. Amen. So you'd be home watching TV probably or doing something frivolous, something that don't amount to a lot, if you didn't spend this time coming to the church and worshiping the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts, the 7th chapter, and the 47th verse. Go with me there this morning. Acts, the 7th chapter, the 47th verse. Now before we start, let me say this, that I know that you scholars out there are going to tell me that we are the body of Christ. We are the temple. We are the church. And it offends some people whenever you say, I'm going to church. Or I'm going to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Because they're like, you're the church. You're the temple. Not that building. That's true. God is not confined within these four walls. Amen. God is not confined within you either. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Amen. Amen. For you to say that God can't be here because He's in you, then that's for you to say that God can't be anywhere because He's in you. And God is everywhere. Amen. Right. And there's something special about a place that you set aside just for the worship yes. of God. Just for gathering in that place to worship and to pray and to lift up Jesus, and to learn of the Word of God. Amen? There's something special about that. Amen. Something special about a place like that. Acts 7 and 47 says, But Solomon built a house, talking about Solomon's temple, talking about building a house of the Lord. Come on. And it says in verse 48, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet Isaiah. So even in the Old Testament, you know, they say, well, the Old Testament, sure, they had a temple, they had those things, but even in the Old Testament, there was the temple that God ordained them to build, instructed them to build, told them how to build it and put it together, and told them what He wanted to go on there. He gave them instruction of what He wanted them to do in the temple. But even then, God was not confined within the temple. Amen? He spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. He was with the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. He was. He appeared many times to many people. He spoke to uh, to uh, the prophet Elijah when he ran from Jezebel and was hiding in the cave. He was up there in the cave. Amen. He was not confined to the tabernacle in the temple. Was it ordained of God? Certainly. Were there things that took place there that were ordained of God? Certainly. I believe today that the local church is ordained of God. I believe that there are certain things that should take place within the confines of the local church. And I believe there are certain things that should not take place within the confines of the local church. I believe there are certain... See, the church today... Instead of being the beacon in the night that she once was, to the lost soul, the alcoholic, hooked on, hooked on alcohol, that, that, that can't even see straight, that, that would stagger in to a, to a storefront church or to a little country church and would be able to make his way down to an old-fashioned altar because the church was there as a soul saving station, a, a light in the darkness, amen, a lighthouse in the midst of the storm. But today, amen. when they come in, they find a glorified coffee house. Right. Amen? True. Anything.
that the, the church has become conformed so much so to the image of the world that there are people leaving church services who say, I really enjoyed it. It was just like a rock concert. Come on. Amen. Come on, pray. A lot of things going on in the house of the Lord. And I'm going to use that term today. So if it offends you, you might want to turn me off. Amen. A lot of things going on in the house of the Lord today that should not be allowed to go on in the house of the Lord. Amen. I read an article yesterday about some churches that were that were drinking their coffee and things in the pews while they were having their service. And one lady, her comment was that her church had just recently put cup holders on the back of the pew so that you could put your cup of coffee in it during service. One lady said, our church is so up, up to date and modern, we have an espresso machine in the corner of the sanctuary where you can fix you a cup of coffee during service. These are things you used to didn't have to address. Right. Amen? True. Even those that did not know the Lord were not raised in church had enough respect for the house of God amen. not to come in right. drinking their soda pop, drinking their coffee, amen, right. chewing their bubble gum and blowing bubbles, amen. Right. There is still something to be said today about respecting the house of God, amen. Right. There is still something to be said today right. about setting a place aside that you don't treat like a pool hall, amen, right. but you treat as a place of worship. Right. I know that He is not confined within these four walls, but that's not what we're talking about really. When you get down to it, we're talking about respect. respect. We're talking about reverence. Amen? And we are living in a generation that you don't have to look too far. They have no respect for mama and daddy. They have no respect for the law. They have no respect for the, for, for the government. They have no respect right. for God. Amen? Right. They have lost their respect for anybody and anything. Nothing is sacred anymore. Right. Come on, preach. So I realize today that God is not boxed in by these four walls. Amen. We don't have to say, oh, i gotta get, I got to pray. I can't pray unless I go down there where God's at. 216 Hill Street, that's where God lives. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, it's not, it's not time to throw out the local church. Amen? Amen? It's not time to throw aside the house of God and say anything and everything goes and we can just do as we please because He's a merciful God. Amen? Come on. I got news for you. You go ahead and treat your church like a pool hall and see what happens. If you don't believe that, it, that you have to have respect and reverence for the Spirit of God, you will spend very little time there. Amen. You will spend very little time in His presence. That's the truth. Because His presence, Brother Sleaze, demands respect. Right. Oh, you ain't hearing me this morning. I said His presence this morning, His presence demands respect. Absolutely. And reverence. Absolutely. So we know here that even Isaiah said that he's not confined within four walls. Heaven is my throne. This is this is the Lord speaking through the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? See, in the Old Testament times, and I guess they still do it, they would build temples and they would set their God in it. Yeah. You know, Dagon and his temple. Right. And other gods as well. And that was his temple. And everybody say, where's old Dagon? Well, he downed his house. Right. We don't serve that kind of God. He's everywhere. Amen. 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 But if you don't think it's important to respect the house of God, if you don't think it's important to reverence the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is like a dove. All right. It will, it will descend True. gently. Amen. And it will leave just as quick as it came if you don't show it respect and reverence. Yes, Amen. Amen. I've been in this thing long enough to have seen it. I have seen the Spirit of God come down in such a way where you could almost see it was like a mist in the congregation. And I've seen people do things that caused it to leave like that. Amen. Amen. I have saw people, tears rolling down their face, the Holy Spirit dealing with their heart and God moving on hearts and life as somebody was singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Or one of the other amazing grace, 
Hello, sweet. And the Spirit of God just dealing with someone's heart. And they're just about to, they're just about for, to get to their breakthrough or go down to an old fashioned, I still believe in old fashioned altars. Amen. Amen. Only thing we got on our altars is this prayer box and some Kleenexes. Amen. And if that, and if those things, if we need more room, we'll move them out of the way while we use it. Amen. This altar is always open and will never be clogged down with a bunch of flowers and angels and things to where people can't pray at it. Amen. Brother Billy, nobody will ever come to it. Well, if they don't, it won't be because it was loaded down with children. Amen. It's here. It's open. It's there for you to pray at. Come on, pray. But I've seen people, the Spirit of God, dealing with them. And then somebody get up. And they'll either change the tempo of the music. Yeah. I'll fly away, oh glory. And it's gone. Mm. Or somebody, or an old saint will stand up and start talking. Yeah. And not shut up for 30 minutes. Right. And it's gone. There is a time and a place. Amen? Right. While the Spirit of the Lord is drawing someone to an old-fashioned altar, right. it's not time for us to change the things, Come change on. the order of things. Right. Amen? Have to be, you have to be able to discern which way the Spirit is moving and be sensitive, as Sister Cindy said, to the way that He is going. Amen? Right. I love working with people that know the moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right. That don't, people are praying and they're crying and they just stop singing. Leave the platform and go do whatever. No, you just keep singing. You just keep flowing with the music. You, I mean, with the Spirit. You just keep flowing and singing and lifting up praises to the Lord till the Spirit of the Lord moves on. You ain't supposed to move till the cloud moves. You ain't supposed to move till the fire moves. Amen? Oh! Hallelujah! When the cloud and the fire moves, that's when we're supposed. Many times we get in front of the cloud and the fire, and we left it back there somewhere, and we're wondering, God, why ain't you leading? Why ain't you got? You done left His path, Amen. You decided to take things into your own. I'm not talking about some setting up some kind of a holy synagogue where you get where it's so stuffy and so religious that the devil calls it home, Amen. I'm talking about a refuge. I'm talking about a beacon in the night, a place that you can come to. Oh, People used to, when they begin to get in bad trouble or whatever, they were really seeing a lot of trials in their life. All right. I've had family members like this. They say, where's my Bible? I'm going to church. Had an uncle. If you saw him with his Bible, he was, you pretty much knew he was in trouble or something. But people knew they could go to the house of God and there would be people there to pray with them. Right. Pray for them. True. They knew there'd be an old fashioned altar for them to pray at. Amen. Now, oh my goodness. Now we have preachers telling us that we have to do away with all these old things. Yeah. If we want to win the world, we've got to be like the world. That ain't what the Bible says. Yeah. That ain't what the Bible says. Amen. Come on. So we know that God's not, He's not. He's not re re restrained within these four walls. True. He's not restrained within you either. Amen. Amen. He's everywhere. Yes. There's something special about it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, Know ye not that you're the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. We know that. We're not saying that this is the place where He dwells and that there's no other place you can find Him. But I'm telling you from right. experience, I come down here and pray every day. And there are times... When I walk into this place and I feel the Spirit, I didn't feel it before I walked in. Amen. I'm telling you, All right. there's something special about a place that you that you don't treat like that you don't treat like just anywhere else. Amen. That you don't treat like it's a pool hall or a bingo parlor. Right. That you don't treat like it's a coffee house. Come on. But it's the house of God. Yes. The house of the Lord. The place you come to worship and to lift up the name of Jesus. The place Amen. you come to learn from the Word of God. Amen. So more than anything, this morning's sermon, maybe it's about respecting and reverencing the Almighty God that we serve. Amen. It's about setting aside a place for worship and for prayer. It's about a generation that for the most part has no respect like I said a while ago, for their parents, Amen. for authority, right. for God. Yes. You realize you used to be able to leave the church door open? Right. 
Because people had too much fear of God in them to go into a church and steal anything. True. Oh, I could preach this morning. Amen. Go ahead. Now it's nothing for you to hear that. Did you know that the church down the street was broke into? Yeah. And they took their music instruments. Right. And they went and pawned them. Right. Amen. You just didn't have that. Because they might rob the IGA. They might rob the filling station. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going in God's house. Amen. That's part that partly that's the church's fault. All right. Because we have so modernized the church that they don't consider it any more of a holy place than they do the garage down on the street corner. Amen. Amen. Because we've got preachers showing up in their flip-flops and their shorts and their muscle shirt to preach their sermons. Amen? Right. Because we've got preachers saying, here, pass out the coffee. Yeah. Because we've got some churches saying, here, pass out the booze. Yes. Oh! Coffee's, the, coffee's a, a light thing considered to what some of the stuff that's going on in the church today. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's not just... You know, we talk about well, the world has no respect for God and they don't have any fear. Neither does the church anymore. Right. The, the majority of the church world, as we call it today, have no respect or no reverence or fear for the, for the Lord. Amen? From the, and it's not just the young people, not just the teens, not just the children. It's from the pulpit on down. All right. We got thing, all kinds of mess going on in our pulpit. Yes, sir. I clicked on a video the other day and was watching it. There was a preacher and he was at Brother John Hagee's church. And he was preaching about Boaz. I forget the name of the preacher. Might have been, I don't know what his name was. If I tell you, if I tell you his name, I'd probably call somebody else. I think it was Genzel Franklin. Anybody ever heard of him? Amen. I wouldn't let that man preach in my pulpit. No matter how much money you offered me. Not after what I saw. Preacher, you old fashioned. That's all right. Leave me alone. I'll stay that way. I'm happy the way I am. Old fashioned. Amen. Amen. True. He began to talk about a woman needs to look for her a Boaz. Mm. Then he took the bow off of it and just left it his ass. And then he began to add other things to it that women have got a hold of. Lazy. Drunken. And he added as to all of those. Mm. And the congregation laughed at Y'all get the point, don't you? I don't have to say it because I don't want to say it. Amen? Amen. And the congregation laughed and Brother Hagee laughed and the preacher stood there and said, I'm not going to turn around and look at Brother Hagee. He invited me. It's his fault. He stuck with it. Oh, yeah. If I invited him, I'd have took away the microphone and said, you're done, buddy. Amen? This is the pulpit and you ain't going to put on that kind of show here. Oh, hey, Brother Billy, you're old-fashioned. I know it. I know it. Uh -huh. Stay in the old Amen. But and the church just laughed and laughed. It was so funny. Mm. And it was so disrespectful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it was so disrespectful. Mm. And I didn't see anybody getting up and walking out. Mm. There might have been. They had a huge crowd. Amen. Yeah. Anywhere something like that's going on, they got a huge crowd. Amen. Yeah. But it's nothing in the church today for us to see people sitting around drinking them a pop. Right. Drinking them some coffee. True. Even a beer. Like we said a while ago, there's some churches that drink their beer. They eat their chips, yeah. eat their candy, donuts. pop their gum, eat their donuts, and more. In places that we're supposed to be gathered to worship the Lord. Amen. Right. True. To lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. There's something special about a place you set aside just for that. Yes, sir. Something you won't get nowhere else. Absolutely. Amen. True. Oh, I might as well go ahead and let it all hang out for the time. I said this a while ago, but I, I typed it out because my memory is getting so bad. I'm getting so old. If I don't type it out, I'll I'll be studying and I'll think, oh, thank you, Lord, for that. And I'll, I have to type it out so I can read it to you. Yeah. Otherwise, I forget when I get here. If you don't think it's important to respect the Spirit of God and His presence, then you will spend very little time there. Because like a dove, it will depart as quickly as it came. Amen. Amen. True. If you don't think it's important to respect His presence, you won't spend burden. What did Jesus think about it? Jesus could have said, well, this old temple, it don't matter. It's supposed to be torn down. It don't matter about this because once I'm gone, the comfort is going to come and live in the hearts of man. And it don't matter what's going on in here. Just let them go ahead and have the building. Amen. 
But Jesus goes in one day and He finds them, the money changers, dealing and making them some money. Amen. Right. And selling things and treating the house of God like a den of thieves. And right. Jesus don't say, hey, judge not. I ain't going to judge you. Go ahead on, brother. Pass me a cup of coffee. You know you know what Jesus did? Right. Jesus got him a whip. Amen. Right. And He went in there and He began to turn over their tables and say, my house is to be called a house of prayer and you have turned it into a den of thieves. Amen. Right. That's what you find in most churches today that you go in. Not all of them, thank God. By, by a long shot, not all of them. But a lot of them today, when you go into them, you don't find a house of prayer or a house of God. Right. You find a den of thieves. Amen. Right. A glorified coffee house. Right. Oh, my Lord. He said, my house should be called, of all nations, the house of prayer. In the church today, we see Super Bowl parties. Starbucks in the foyers. Snack machines and soda pop machines. Brother Donnie Swagger said he was at a church preaching. I don't know how long ago it's been, but he said that somebody got up Said they had him a pop machine out in the foyer. Somebody got up from the pew and went out to the foyer. And you could hear the money drop, the can fall, the lid pop. Yeah. The guy walks down the aisle with his soda pop, yeah. sits down on the pew and enjoying himself a Pepsi. Yeah. I don't know if I'd had the boldness to do it or not, but Brother Donnie walked over and took it away from him. <laughs> and said, not while I'm here. Amen. It's time that we had some people that stood up for something. Yeah. Instead of just saying, oh, judge not. No. You can't stand for nothing today without being accused of judging. Oh. You can't preach any truth today or against oh. sin today without being accused of judging. That ain't what Jesus meant. Amen? He never said judge not that you be not judged. And what I mean, boys, is if you see evil, keep your mouth shut. No. He has instructed us to reprove, to rebuke, to stand for the right and not for the wrong. To stand for the truth. Amen. And against false doctrine. Come on, preach. If you really think you shouldn't judge nobody for anything, well then if you live in one of these big cities and you look down the alley and you see two hooded guys there, one of them got a gun. The other one's got a billy club. Go on down there. Don't judge him, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> don't, don't be judging them. Yeah. Go on down there. Yeah. The Bible says you know them by the fruit they bear. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I ain't talking about setting back with some critical spirit. I'm talking about today, I'm talking about respecting the house of God. I'm talking about seeing right. snacks and soda pop and, and, and coffee and all these things. Wow. Cell phones. Can I talk about that for a few minutes this morning? Yeah, I ain't talking cell phones and iPads, brother, T brother Tyler. And I'm not talking about people that use them for their Bible because that's the first feedback I'll get. They'll say, I don't pack a Bible. I use my iPad or I use my cell phone. I'm not talking about that. Not that I believe that that's the best thing. Uh -huh. We're not to the place where we don't have these yet. Amen. Pick you one up and take it to church with you. And what is it more convenient for you to have it in your pocket than it is to pack one in your hand? Take, and we've got some on the back of the pew. You don't even have to bring your own. Amen? Right. So I'm not saying it's the best thing. One of the reasons is because some kids will see you on your, your iPhone or your iPad and they'll think they're playing the game. Yeah. And they'll think it's alright for them to do it. Amen? So it don't look good. Amen? Amen? It don't look good. Get you an old-fashioned Bible. Amen? And while you're doing it, make sure it's King James. It ain't welcome in most of the modern churches today, but it's welcome here. Amen? Amen. Make sure it's a King James. And get you one of those. And then put your iPad on pause or, or put it on vibrate or your iPhone or whatever. I'm not talking about those that use it for their Bible. Although I think I've made it pretty clear what I think about that. Amen. I'm talking about those that sit there sending text messages. Yeah. I'm a church. Yeah. What are you up to? Just worshiping the Lord. Huh? I don't hate how in the world, how can you worship the Lord and send text message to Facebook at the same time? All right. A pastor not long ago was sending pictures of the service, posting them up to Facebook right in the middle of their church service. I'm talking about reverence to the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about reverence to the Spirit of God. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using them as your Bible. And I know some people, some people leave them turned on just in case of an emergency or something. I'm not, I'm not belittling you for that either. I'm talking about sitting around playing on them. Amen. I'm, and this happens. 
I'm talking about Facebook and all them, right in the middle of church. Amen. And there are Christians out there that won't like that. I, when I post this sermon to Facebook and you hear this, you'll get your feathers ruffled because you, you post to Facebook and all that. On, on, and, and listen, listen, mega churches, they, they encourage this. They encourage you to message during church. I've, said, I've heard preachers say, yeah, we want you to share what you're learning. Just get on there and start sharing it. I'm thinking maybe they think if you're so distracted that you don't really know what's going on, you won't notice the mess they're preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen? The more distracted you are, maybe the more you won't realize what's actually being preached in your church. Amen? One preacher has his cell phone laying up on the thing there, and if you have a question during his sermon, you can text him the message. And they'll say, hold on, I've got a message. Oh, so-and-so wants to know, you know what, this is a question I just got from the congregation. If you have some questions to ask me, please wait till after church. Amen? My cell phone's turned off. I appreciate cell phones, but I don't like people. And as we had this problem here. I'm not talking, I'm not. We haven't had this problem here. If we ever do, you know how the pastor, what the pastor thinks about it. Amen? Before it happens. But these things that I'm talking about, I don't see anybody in here this morning Facebooking. I don't see anybody in here this morning drinking their pop or their coffee or their booze. Amen? Amen? Or eating their chips, amen? Or eating them a breakfast sandwich or a donut. Right. But we see this going on all across our nation in churches everywhere. Amen. All across our nation. Super Bowl parties, we talked about that. Starbucks, snacks, soda pop, cell phones, iPads. And not just in the pew, from the pulpit. Preachers. Amen. True. Using off color humor. Some preachers cussing. Right. Cussing. Cussing. Amen. Oh, I can preach on cussing. Amen. Amen. Oh. Open your Bible. You'll find one disciple that cussed. And when he did it, he was trying to prove to him he didn't know Jesus. If you want to prove to somebody, oh, my Lord. <laughs> if you want to prove to somebody you don't know Jesus, just go around cussing like a sailor. They won't believe you do. Oh, my, 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 my. That's right. The church is no longer a refuge for the weary, a place to find God. Amen? Come on. Now it's become more of a social club, a place where instead of being transformed by the power of God, they find a church that has been transformed into the image of the world because of preachers that write books saying that in order to win the world, you must look like the world. You must sound like the world. Your music must be more popular. It must be more like the world's music to win them. Your services must be, must, must be more contemporary. Your Bible must be more contemporary than that old King James that can't nobody understand. Somebody said once, they said, I just get hung up on all those these. Well, how stupid are you? How hard is it to pronounce thee? Amen? What are, how many other words can thee be? Amen? Thee is thee and thou is thou. If that's the only words you get hung up on, you're in trouble. Come on. You really need education. Come on, preach. No longer a refuge. No longer a beacon in the night. No longer a lighthouse in the midst of the storm. Romans 12 and 2 says this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That word conformed there means to fashion alike. Be not fashioned like this world. Amen. Amen. But wait a minute, Brother Billy. The best-selling books from the most popular mega pastors tell us to do that. Yeah. They tell us to conform to the world. Yeah. If you look in these books that teach you about building the church, in other words, numbers, they tell you to go out in the neighborhood in the town where you're at and ask the people, what would you like to see at church? What would you like to have at a church that you went to? Then, Sister Cindy, you come back with all that feedback and you have a big board meeting. And you decide all the things that you're going to implement. Yeah. So some people say, well, I, I, like, I like some of that Christian rock. Yeah. I like some of that rap. I like it rap. Yeah. I like some drama. Yeah. I, I, like, I like to be, you know, I'd like for it to be an atmosphere more like a concert. That don't nothing too churchy. You know why? Because that makes them feel bad. It convicts them. It convicts them. Amen. Right. It convicts them. Power. 
You see, they want you to feel good. They want to make you feel comfortable. Come on. If you're not right with God, you shouldn't feel comfortable right. in church. Right. Amen? Right. They want you to feel comfortable when you come in, feel comfortable while you're there. Leave feeling comfortable about yourself. Listen, I want you to feel love here. I want you to feel the Spirit of God here. If you're living in sin and on your way to hell, I do not want you to feel comfortable in this place. Amen? Amen. I want you to feel the need yeah, to repent. That's good. I want you to feel old. I still believe in old time Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. I want you to feel the convicting power of God that lets you know that no, you ain't okay. Amen. But they'll come into the church house and it feels comfortable and yeah. the atmosphere is different than it used to be. There's no crosses. You know why? Because the books tell you take down your crosses, it'll offend somebody. Yeah. Take down your religious symbols, it'll offend somebody. Yeah. Well, my friend, your compromise offends God. Amen. Oh, yeah. You're offending God. You're offending God. The only one that they're the only one they're not worried about offending is God. They don't offend nobody else. They don't care if they offend God. Amen. But they'll come into our churches, a place where they used to. If you came in bound by sin, drugs, alcohol, whatever it was, and you you would feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost and it would draw you. It would draw you. And it doesn't beat on you. Y'all felt conviction before. I hope you still feel conviction. Amen? Right. It's a little tug at your soul. It's gentle. And the Holy Ghost will deal with them. They don't feel that anymore because now they feel comfortable. And the preacher will get up there and say, you're okay. Yeah. You can be the best you can. Listen, whenever you get up and preach a message that you can have your best life now, you can be the best that you can be and you leave out Jesus. That's dangerous. Amen. Because you can't have a good life without Him. Right. This life is meaningless. It means nothing to you if you don't accept Him. Hey, all it is is a wasted opportunity. Once you die, you will find out just what you missed out on if you do not accept Jesus in this life. But I've heard people leave these mega churches and they would say things like this, well, I don't believe in God, but I like His positive message. I like His positive attitude. I feel good there. You shouldn't. Amen. You shouldn't. Amen. You shouldn't feel good Amen. there. But the latest bestsellers tell us to conform to the world. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Amen. Be transformed. The music is more like a rock concert. And listen, Christian rock bears the same spirit as worldly rock does. It's a, it's a spirit of rebellion. True. Amen. Exactly. I realize that we all have different tastes in music. And a lot of people quarrel over these things. But surely I can get to you, you to agree at least with one thing. If you cannot tell the difference, whether it's Christian or whether it's not, then it ain't. Come on. Amen? Come on. If you can't tell the difference, but Brother Billy, it's the lyrics. Yeah, you can't hear the lyrics. No. Amen? You right. can't hear the lyrics. So the lyrics is doing me no good. And besides, some of the rock people sing some of the same lyrics along the same lines. True. There's a different spirit behind it. Yes, sir. Amen. If you don't learn to discern that, right. you're in trouble. We made the church instead of a house of prayer and a house of worship and a refuge and a beacon in the night has become good time Charlie's. Entertain. Entertainment. Let's see if we can entertain them better. If we can entertain them better, we can get that crowd from down the street. Yeah. Amen. Because well, I already heard some people saying, well, they, it's kind of boring there. And um, it's not exciting enough. If we can get exciting enough, we can get that crowd from down there. Yeah, you can. Until then, people down there get more exciting than you, and then they'll leave to that sh go to that show. Amen. True. The house of God in America today, in many cases, is no longer a house of prayer. It is a house of entertainment, Christian rock music, strobe lights, dramas, movies, book discussions, groups, sports, dancing, Christian comedians, and other things that offer a good time, but not the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Instead of the church transforming the world, the world has transformed the church. Amen. And we have taken bad counsel by, by, from bad leaders that say, get rid of this and get rid of that, but we need to get rid of them. All right. Amen. Amen. Can I say that again? They'll write books, Brother Dave, that'll say, get rid of this and get rid of that. And we need to get rid of them. Amen. Amen. We need to tell them, listen, I love you. I'll pray for you. You need to be saved. You ain't going to be my pastor no more. Amen. Right. Until you begin to line up with the book. If it ain't in the book, it ain't, it, it, it ain't worth your time. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Go with me this morning. I'm fixing to close. I don't know how long I've been preaching. 
Genesis 28 and 10. Genesis 28 and 10. Somebody got after me a few weeks ago because I said, if you're in a hurry, you can go ahead and go. <laughs> uh, you know I love you. Amen. 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 I hope those of you out there that are listening to this preacher over the radio or watching this video know that I need to spend the time in prayer that I spent this week wrestling with this and being fought with this because I thought this was going to make me popular. Right. This is going to be a feather in my cap. No, it's because I have to preach what the Lord gives me to preach. Amen. Amen. He gives me what He gives me because He loves us. I give it to you because I love you. Amen. Amen. I want you. I don't want you to be deceived. I want you to know the truth. Many deceivers in the world. <clears throat> Many deceivers saying put out the cross and anything else that makes the world uncomfortable. Amen. And listen, I said well, I've said this before, but it's worth mentioning again. If people do feel conviction, the preacher will talk them out of it. Right. I know a couple that went and they met with the pastor of a church. And they went to his office and they said, These things are bothering me, this here and this here and this here. He said, That's just condemnation. That's just cause way he was raised. Amen? And listen, some things are personal provision and some things are just flat out wrong. Right. Amen? It's true. And he said, no, that's just... So you know what they did? They took his advice. They took his advice. Mm. One of them completely lost today. Oh. And the other one, I don't know what they're messed up in. But... Mm. Another couple <clears throat> that I heard about, they were alcoholics hooked on alcohol. Got into a little church. The Lord delivered them. They were running on for Jesus. They had to move. Had to relocate because of the man's job. They joined another church and they really liked it. They really liked what was going on. Things was going good. They got invited to a Bible study or a fellowship night at somebody's house. And a bunch of the church people showed up. And they all sat around and started breaking out the booze. Drinking. Wine. Beer too. And these are people that have been delivered out of alcoholism. They thought, this ain't right. I bet the pastor don't know about this. And they went to the pastor. They said, Pastor, we don't want to stir up anything, but this is tearing us up. Said, so we think you ought to know this. So they tell the pastor what's going on, and the pastor says, now, I need to counsel you too. That's condemnation. Ain't nothing wrong with a little alcohol. So you know what happened? They took the man's advice and it wasn't long until they were both alcoholics all over again. Thank God the man got relocated to another place. Amen. <laughs> God put in orders from headquarters and said, let's move them out of this mess. Amen. And give him a job in another place. Amen. So they get a job in another place and they start going to a little church and they begin to preach old-fashioned, old-time conviction. And they say, hey, what that other pastor told us wasn't right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Many times people will point a finger and say, you're judging me. But in reality, and I know people do judge and it's bad and we shouldn't do that. But a lot of times, more times than not, it's conviction that's working on people. Right. And they feel bad. And they think, well, they're judging me. No, God's judging you. God judges all of us. Amen? Man. We're all judged according to Him. Right. His convicting power. That's what it means by work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what it means by godly repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Go home and look up that scripture. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's talking about conviction. Ah, Genesis 28 and 10, and I'm trying to close. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping, but boy, if I had to sleep on rocks, I probably wouldn't get a wink. So he goes to sleep good enough that he has this dream. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it into thy seed. And to thy seed shall be the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, 
I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee, spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other than but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Now Jacob calls this place the house of God and he names it Bethel. This morning's sermon is entitled A Place Called Bethel. He names it Bethel, meaning the house of God. Now God had already told him, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. In all places, whether thou goest, I'm with thee. So Jacob knew that, well, God's just going to be right here. If I ever need God again, I'm going to have to come all the way back here to where I'm at. No, but he set up this place because something spiritual had happened there. A revelation had taken place there. So he sets up an altar and he calls this place Bethel, the house of God, because God's presence, God still has the ability to fill a house. Amen. Go over there and read the book of Acts. I know we are filled with the Spirit, but read what it filled first. Right. It filled the house where they were sitting. Amen. Tongues of fire lit upon all of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So the, right. Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord still can descend and hover in a place. Oh, yes it can. Yeah. I've seen it. Amen. I've been there. I've experienced that. Come on. And that's what Jacob was feeling here. Yeah. The Spirit in the presence of an Almighty God. Amen. So he says in this place that he calls it Bethel. Yeah. We find him not too far down the road in, in the chapter 35, still in Genesis. Jacob has backslidden to some degree. He's not where he needs to be with God. He's allowed things to go on that shouldn't be going on. So from chapter 28 to chapter 35, different things happen. You can read that. But in chapter 35, the first verse says, And Jacob, and God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make thee an altar unto, the, unto, the, unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. And he tells the people, then Jacob said in verse 2, unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. He said, put away the strange gods. Amen. Take off your filthy garments and put on clean. Right. Where are we going, Jacob? We're going back to Bethel. Amen. <laughs> now, God was not confined to Bethel, but that was the place where Jacob had set aside as the place of being the house of God. A spiritual place. A place of what? A place of an altar. Amen? The place of prayer. The place of His dream. His revelation. The place of His vow. If you go back and read that, He vowed to God to give a tenth of all that He ever has. He dedicated to God to give. You start going to a Bible preaching church, you'll feel the need to be dedicated in your giving. Because KU don't say, hey, y'all can have your lights for free. City of Livermore don't say, hey, you can have your water for free. The people at the carpet place didn't say, hey, we'll come lay that carpet for free. The people don't give us radio time for free. The, the, it's not free to send out the newsletters, the CDs, CDs and the cassettes and run the internet radio station and do all that we do. You will feel a need to be dedicated to give it to the work of God. Amen. Amen. Not so the pastor's dog can have an air-conditioned doghouse, amen, but so that the preaching of the Word of God can go forth. Amen. For the promotion of the truth. Amen. Preach it. The place of the vow that he made. Yeah. The place of the altar. The place of prayer. The place of revelation. The house of God. Yeah. He said, put away the strange gods. We're going back. Come on. The church needs to go back to Bethel. <laughs> Wonder what kind of reaction the mega church pastor would get if he went in tomorrow with his board members and said, oh, listen, we're going to get rid of these strobe lights. We're going to get rid of this smoke. We're going to put in an altar. We're going to clean out our bookstore and get rid of all them NIVs. We're going to start having prayer in the house of God. You're going to be able to tell the difference 
difference from now on between our music and REO Speedwagons? Praise the Lord. They'd say, Pastor, it's been good knowing you. Right. You're fired. Right. Amen. Exactly. Amen. True. It's time somebody stood up. Amen. And said, We done missed the mark. There is still something to be said about a place that is set aside. There's still something to be said about an old-fashioned altar. Yes, sir. There's still something to be said about a place that you can go to and know that there are people that will pray for you, right. that will pray with you, that will pray for the lost, that will pray until, they're, until you're done praying. Right. You ever feel rushed before? Yeah. You wanted to pray longer. Uh -huh. But the meatloaf was burning. Yeah. We had more activities to do. The drama team's got to come on. Yeah. The show must go on. The show must go on. Amen, Brother Sleeves. No truer word spoken than that. The show must go on. You're in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. We need to go back to Bethel. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Back to the place of the old-fashioned altar. Back to having our prayer warriors. Back to having our old country preachers that didn't care to tell you what was white and what was black, what was what 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 was right and what was wrong. Amen. Right. Preaching the truth of the word of God. So Jacob, he gets these people up and he says, We gotta go back. I've done missed the mark. We need some people that'll say that today. Amen. That'll be humble enough to say we done messed up. We gotta go back. Right. Me and Reese's do in our in our travels. Not a lot of them, but in our travels, there's many times we've had we've said well, we got we're going to turn around and go back. We missed our exit. We're going to turn around and go back because we're on the wrong road. Yeah. Eighty percent of the church needs to say that today. Amen. We need to wake up and realize you done took a wrong turn. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Go back to bed. Get up. Put away the strange gods. Amen. Come on. Oh, put away the strange gods. And the church has a lot of strange gods. We can't get into that this morning or I won't ever shut up. But see, when you come into His presence, His light reveals. It searches. It convicts. But man somehow has found a way to brush that off. But Jacob knew, I'm going back to the place that I called the house of God. we got to get rid of some of this stuff. At the age of 19 years old when I I had been out of church for a little while I went back and my cousin he was going for the girls he was pretty sure he'd get me a girl there so I went with him <laughs> we went in there and I sat there and I felt the presence of God and I heard the preaching of the word we left that service that night and I said Tim I'm going to go to church but if I go to church I can't go this way. Because see, we were going in just for show or whatever. We were going out still doing whatever the things that we were doing. Not that we were real bad or nothing, but we weren't living right. Amen? Wrong reason. Holy Ghost conviction, Brother Dave, gripped my soul and said, if you're going to be here, you see that altar? Amen. You got some things you need to talk Amen. over with me. <laughs> And it wasn't long, Brother Rodney, and I found myself down at that old-fashioned altar, and I was pouring my heart out to God and said, Oh, God, I'm sorry I strayed from you. Oh, and He welcomed me back in. Amen. I ain't looked back since. Hallelujah. There's still room in this church for an old-fashioned altar, and if there's not room in your church for an altar, you might as well shut her down and open up a car wash or something. Amen. Oh, praise. Oh, Hallelujah. Go back to Bethel, the place of the altar, the place of the vow, the place of the revelation of God. Come on, preach. The place of the Word of God. True. Back to Bethel. Yes. Back to Bethel. Back to Bethel. Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, church, listen to me. If sinners, and I don't use that word lightly, I'm talking about unsaved people. I know we're all sinners saved by grace. I'm talking about those that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If they can come into our services and feel good about themselves and leave without feeling any conviction, something is wrong Amen. somewhere. Can I say this this morning? If the world can get around you, Christian, and tell their dirty jokes and cuss every breath, drink and smoke, and not feel bad at all, 
you might want to check your light. It may have went out. Amen. Amen. True. It may have went out. Right. Sinners or people that are not living for the Lord, people that are living in sin, should not feel comfortable around you. Amen. When you walk into a room, if they're telling a dirty joke, they should stop. Right. Why? Respect and reverence for the God that lives inside of you. Right. That's what we're talking about this morning is respect and reverence for God and His Spirit. Amen. Amen. Respect and reverence. My, my, my. So they get up and they go back to Bethel. And the Bible says, let me find it. I got so many pages of notes, I tell you, we ain't going to get through. They gave unto Jacob their strange gods, which were in their hands, and all their earrings, which were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the rock, which was by Shechem. They journeyed, and the terror of the Lord, the terror of God, was upon the cities that were round about them. They did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. The presence of God protected them. Amen. Amen. So Jacob came to Luz, which is the land of Canaan, that is Bethel. He and all the people that were with him, and he built there an altar, and he called the place. Listen, to what he calls it. I'm in Genesis 35 and 7. He called the name of the place. El Bethel. That means the God of the house of God. <laughs> That's who we're really talking about today. Praise the Lord. Is respect for our God. Respect for His presence yes. and His Spirit. Amen. When He spoke to Moses out of the burning bush, mm -hmm. the Lord said, Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Now that was the same old dirt that it was everywhere in the wilderness, but God's presence right. mm -hmm. had lit there. Right. God's presence lights here. Presence lights here. Amen. Amen. That's what you feel. That's the Spirit of God. Anointing. The anointing of the Lord comes down in this place. Yes. And if you don't think it bothers it any that you sit around blowing your bubbles or eating your chips <laughs> or your jelly beans. Right. Something ain't right. Amen. Drinking your coffee. Texting somebody. Oh, let me see. Amen. There's this holy ground. When John the Revelator was in the presence of the crucified one of the Isle of Patmos, the Bible says he fell down in front of him as dead. Yes. Why? Reverence and respect. respect. I'm telling you, God's presence demands respect. Amen? Yes, sir. I do have a few more scriptures that I'll share with you another time. But God's presence, His Holy Spirit demands respect. And if it's not there, neither will His Spirit be. Amen. Amen. But I feel something. Yeah. They feel something at the Kiss concert. Yeah. Are they still singing? They may be. Yeah. They're probably about 85. Still there. Yeah. Still I saw a poster somewhere where Hank Williams Jr. supposed to be in Oldsboro. I figured he's in a nursing home by now or something. But anyway, them old guys, they just keep going, don't they? Yeah. Probably on a walker or something. But they feel something there. Talk to some of them people that used to... Well, they may be dead now. Yeah, that went to the Elvis concerts. They're probably 100 years old now. So get find somebody that went to one of the newer people. Garth Brooks or somebody, I guess. And I don't keep up with those new things. But talk to them. They felt something. Yeah. You'll feel something. Right. God's Holy Spirit is not the only Spirit. Right. Amen. You better learn to be able to tell the difference or you're going to be in trouble. Amen? True. The devil has a counterfeit for everything that's real. Yes. Amen? True. So yeah, you'll feel something. Right. But it ain't the right something. So it's try the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Respect God. Amen? Return to Bethel. Come on. The house of God. The house of the Lord. Amen? The place of worship. A place that can be a beacon in the night and a lighthouse to the lost instead of a coffee shop. Yeah. For the businessman. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go. I went far longer than I expected to go. That's good.